there. Have you ever wondered what it takes to lose an election to the most unpopular, unpredictable, unqualified candidate in the history of American politics? Well, here's a step-by-step -step guide designed by me, yours truly, a liberal Democrat. So perhaps we can finally hold ourselves accountable and maybe learn from our mistakes. Step one, get as far away from your working class roots as possible and become a centrist party. Protect big banks, coddle up to big oil and pharmaceutical companies. Support Wall Street casino gambling, endless wars, unfettered free trade deals that leave Rust Belt states reeling, and any kind of policy that contributes to record-breaking inequality. In other words, back the conditions that make it possible for a pseudo-populist authoritarian to appeal to the disillusioned masses and take over. The American dream is dead. But if I get elected president, I will bring it back bigger and better and stronger than ever before, and we will make America great again. Step two. Nominate a candidate that is the embodiment of everything that the disillusioned masses blame for their misery. In a political climate of anti-establishment politics, select an uber-wealthy, widely despised globalist who represents establishment politics and establishment economics. Expect that candidate to inspire and be elected by the 60% of American voters who claim they want change and who feel like Washington just doesn't represent them. In other words, don't offer a visionary call to end politics as usual, in spite of the fact that voters keep telling us they want to end politics as usual. Step three, if any of our candidates' multiple scandals come up during the elections, don't question why we actively and knowingly chose to nominate an extremely vulnerable candidate with so many scandals. Someone that we knew was being investigated by the FBI. That would mean we'd have to look at our own recklessness and we sure don't want to do any of that. Step four, silence progressive voices within the party. That's right, make sure the primary race disproportionately favors the party machine's choice and sabotages the clearly stronger candidate for the current political climate. A person that understood the spirit of the times and generated the type of massive enthusiasm and anti-establishment vision for change that the reality TV star also had, but that our nominee lacked. The antidote to Trump is a very strong progressive agenda that says, yes, I know that you're angry. And it has to be a bold and radical agenda. No more same old, same old. I don't mean to be political here. People are hurting and they're angry and they want something to be able to stand up and fight for. Step five. Don't try to understand or appeal to a whole part of America composed of white blue collar individuals that have been ravished by economic inequality for decades. After all, they're just a basket of deplorables anyway. And naturally, they're all raging racists. Never mind that 708 counties across Rust Belt states that voted to elect a black man in 2008 and in 2012 flipped the elections this time around to vote for our candidate's opponent. Ignoring little facts like that and screaming racism at anything and everything will really give us the moral high ground and liberal self-righteousness that will immediately get half of the country that we've alienated to listen to us. Just keep on courting corporate professionals and we'll do just fine. Step six, ensure that our chosen candidate spends more time with Lena Dunham than with the voters of Wisconsin. Because clearly, enthusiasm and a radical economic vision of change for the future will never energize millennials that didn't vote for our candidate. But celebrities sure will. Step seven, express complete and utter shock when the people revolt and our candidate loses. You're awake, by the way. You're not having a terrible, terrible dream. Also, you're not dead and you haven't gone to hell. This is your life now. This is our election now. This is us. This is our country. Which, admittedly, I did as well.
Step eight, if we want to continue on jeopardizing the future of the country by helping to put a bigoted authoritarian in office and continue on losing elections, like the presidency, seats in the House and the Senate, and across state legislatures, then listen very closely take absolutely no accountability. It is imperative that we point the finger at everyone else. Blame Russia, the FBI, WikiLeaks, Bernie Bros, third party voters, Bernie Sanders and his supporters. I think Bernie and Bernie supporters damaged Hillary Clinton more so than Donald Trump did. Anyone and everyone except ourselves. Self-reflection is overrated. Step nine, if we do decide to look at our own party's role in this, just pretend to take accountability. Declare some platitudes that affirm the need to bring in new voices to the party. Make a change here and there, but all in all, keep the same old party leadership intact. I'm sure it'll bring us very different results. Finally, step 10. This one is for my friends in the liberal media establishment. Don't have the voices of the working class in your TV programs and newspapers. Talk about the working class, but never talk to the working class. Actually, be completely disdainful of any of their problems or concerns. And particularly for this election, brand all the white, blue collar individuals that supported the reality TV star as being collectively stupid, racist, and xenophobic. Of course, race is a conversation that needs to be had, but don't bother to do much original reporting on where their grievances stem from and how we've also failed them. Always continue to reaffirm your own superior wisdom, cause that'll really advance your righteous vision for America. Now, let's get real. Because in order to learn from our mistakes to ensure that we never again unify behind failure, we must first own the consequences of our politics. Because the Democratic elite is just as responsible as Republicans in the media for putting Donald Trump in the White House. Enough with establishment politics. If we want to succeed in fighting Donald Trump, it's gonna take a real progressive movement to do it. And it's our time to take over the Democratic Party. Thank <laughs> you.